Hello, and welcome back to the old, what we called? Old. <laughs> Good start, Tim. Good start. <laughs> we are, in fact, called Old Rope Salvage. I'm Lisa, and this is Tim, and we are in the process of restoring this 1975 Bedford fire truck into what we hope will one day be a spectacular rolling home on wheels. In the meantime, I'm taking a bit of a break from the project. Hi there. Sorry to leave you alone with him, folks, but hang in there. Whilst my forgetful other half gets to grips with some of the tangled bits of metal, which apparently used to be the brake lines, and attempts to fabricate something new and shiny from the wreckage. Accidents aside, he's doing a fabulous job. So sit back and enjoy, make sure to subscribe, leave an encouraging comment, and I promise I'll be back tending to his injuries in no time. Ah, hello, and welcome back to the Old Rope Salvage Workshop. It's been a long time since I've filmed anything, and I'm a bit rusty. And also, this video is probably going to be edited by me, so I'll do my best, but stick with me, I'll get better. There's been lots of work going on, uh, I'll show you a little bit of what I've been doing in a little while. Little bits and pieces, really. What I'm currently working on is something I've probably been putting off for a little bit, really. But it's all of the braking system, all the brake lines. They're all metal lines on this thing, and when I took them off the truck, I kind of hid them in the corner laid out roughly how they are and so they are currently on the workbench how they sort of would be in the truck some of them broke when i took them apart some of them don't look great in places and it's been a dilemma to know what to do with it some trucks are converted or they run plastic lines uh, they do different things but it's quite old and all the fittings on it are old unf fittings all the modern stuff is bsp or whatever and um yeah it was a dilemma what I've ended up with is the hydraulic brake lines, they're all going to get replaced anyway and all the rest of them are air lines and you can't really tell the condition of them because when they look good on the outside they might be bad on the inside. Some of them did snap like I said and some of them had leaks in so I've decided to replace the whole lot, all of it and I'm going to do it in metal lines again because I think it's going to end up for a much neater uh, finish to it. Each way is cost costs money so if it's plastic lines I have to change all the fittings. This way the lines are expensive but the fittings are cheap and they're all connecting how they were. So I got a lot of fittings. I'm replacing all of them so that I can keep this out on the bench how it is uh, and replace one at a time. If I had to you reuse the fittings I'd be cutting them apart and everything. And I have a lot brake and air lines. Unfortunately as well, this uses five different sizes of different brake lines on it. The main hydraulic parts of it, which run from the master cylinder to the wheel cylinders, uh, typical as you'd normally get on a car, are 7 sixteenths. The smaller of our air lines, which is the majority of them, are three packets of 3 eighths inch. There's some slightly bigger airlines which are half inch and some really big lines which just go around the engine which are 5 eighths inch which I'm going to try and keep those ones. Uh, there's not a lot of them and I'm going to see what I can do. And then there's a whole bunch of smaller stuff which is sort of control valves and just, uh, ones that run from the methanol uh, tank and stuff like that. So yeah, in this video I'm going to be trying to replace all of this, 125 feet of brake line. I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. It's like a plate of spaghetti. Uh, got to start somewhere. Maybe I'll try a little one first. Gonna need some tools as well. The truck has many, many brake lines. Some of them were rusty on the outside, on the inside, 
And rather than trying to repair them, Tim decided to replace the lot. Our old brake lines were made of steel, but they could have been stainless steel, copper, or indeed what we are using to replace them, cupro nickel. 90% copper, 10% nickel, which is a little bit more malleable, corrosion resistant, incredibly strong, and hopefully will last for years. The special tools which Tim is referring to include some pipe benders, a little cheap one from the middle of Lidl for the smaller brake lines and a bigger version for the bigger pipes. To make the flares he has a flaring kit which he had used previously on our old 1940s truck but it was a fiddly old job using that little kit so he's treated himself to a bigger fancier version which you can watch him trying out here. Do stay tuned until later though, because Tim will talk you through this whole process and how it turned out for him and the brake lines by the end.
Well, I thought I'd uh, do a few of these brake lines before I commented on it. Now, I've done brake lines in the past. Most of the stuff I've done has been pretty normal and quite a bit smaller, the bore size of it, than what I'm doing on this. Just to give you an idea, these are my rear brake lines, or the, the main brake lines, and that's bigger, quite a bit bigger than you'd get on a normal car. And then you get up to the uh, airlines, quite a bit bigger, and then the big airlines, they're massive. Anyway, so what have I learned doing this? Well, not a lot really, uh, just being patient and being careful. The bending is pretty straightforward, but the pipe is not that forgiving. So you really need to bend it and get it right because you can't really move it around later, like just to push it over a little bit. It needs to be pretty all right. Obviously with thin lines, you can just budge them a little bit. But the thicker they get, the more perfect they have to be. But in doing a few, I've kind of got a bit better at it and I'm finding it pretty easy to get them the right curves. Uh, little techniques I've done, nothing special, but just drawn on the bender where the pipe would bend to, laying the old one onto it and bend into that. It's pretty straightforward. One big thing that I found is that this uh, flaring tool just save so much time. It is really, really good. Uh, it's definitely worth spending a few quid, especially if you're doing a lot of this stuff. Um, yeah, that is really good. So that's the first thing I've learned. Second thing I've learned, when I got to these bigger lines, unfortunately, this won't do the half inch pipe. And for me to get something that would do half inch, it was quite a lot more money. I did think I'd have to take them somewhere else, but uh, I tried it with, I've got this cheapy old flaring tool. Now these things are awful, but they kind of get the job done a bit, but this does have a half inch on it. So I've been trying to do the flares and I have managed to do some flares. Which brings me on to the second thing. The first one I did of these, they always say you'll forget to put one of these ends on and I've got loads of spare line and the other sizes the fat stuff, I'm really down to like, I've only just got enough. I did my first successful pipe after quite a few attempts and realized I've missed the end on one. So I had to cut the end off it and put it on and then it's too short. But what I also did, and this is a really, really stupid thing to do, is uh, this thing has had wing nuts on it and you've got to get it really tight and I made the stupid mistake of putting an adjustable spanner, this adjustable spanner, on one of the wing nuts, yanking it up, and it snapped the ears off the wing nut, which resulted in me smacking myself in the face with this spanner and nearly knocking out my teeth. Bad idea. Play clip. Ow. Better fill in the injury book. It hurt a lot. But yeah, I'll uh, get on with these. Got a few more to make. Also, it is so tidy looking. I'll show you at the end, but yeah. We're learning a little bit as we go along, but it's pretty good. I love doing this brake line. These solid lines are really good. I'm glad I did this over using plastic or anything else. Um, it would have been such a mess in there. So yeah, it's good. Love this thing though. Last night I got so drunk, I didn't even know my name. A modern truck would be using a nylon plastic for its airlines, and we did look into using that ourselves. But help and information was very difficult to come by, particularly as our old 70s Bedford is all imperial rather than metric, making it even more complicated. So Tim decided that the metal lines were the best way to go, and in our old truck made the most sense and would lead to a much tidier outcome at the end of it. The pipe itself was more expensive, but the fittings were cheaper, so meh, swings and roundabouts. Uh, 
it occurred to me while I was filming this, putting this all together, that I didn't really explain what it is I'm doing. So I thought maybe I'd try and explain it as simply and as interestingly as I can. As I said, with uh, fittings and brake lines, I have some here and they show kind of what a regular car would use, very small pipes, small fittings. This is what's on the old truck. These are our hydraulic lines that we have for our brakes, the ones that have the hydraulic fluid in them. And our airlines, these are smaller airlines, the medium size and the big ones that I'm not replacing. To use this pipe, we have to cut it first, or at least at some point on that. I've been using a piece of string when I've got an old brake pipe, like this one, to kind of measure the length of it, using a bit of string and allow me to work out how long I need the piece. But also for bending purposes as well, pieces of wire are really good if you need, can make it up with a piece of wire first and it helps with the bending later on. Cutting it, yeah, just normal um, pipe cutters. Pretty straightforward, easy to use, no explanation needed. Cleaning up the ends and then we put a flare on the end. The reason for the flare is, obviously when you put the pipe fitting on the end, it just comes off. The pipe fitting screws into another part and what we're doing by putting the flare on the end is creating the seal which stops the nut coming off but also the actual copper pipe itself seals against the um, butt part you're screwing it onto. I can show that here perhaps we have some that have been made up. To make the flare on the end this is quite complicated. I think I'm going to have to get a drawing out and draw it. What we do basically is take a, take a piece of pipe. Uh, there are various different types of flare. The most standard one is what you call a, like a normal single flare. So the bit of pipe, this is the bit of the pipe, has the very end of it flared out to 45 degrees. That allows the part that's going to go into it to seal into this bit here uh, it goes in and seals it up. These single flares aren't generally used a great deal uh, they're seen as not as good really as a double flare and that's what we're using uh, 45 degree double flares. What happens to this is uh, the pipe is clamped into the machine and uh, a tool is put into the end. The first part process of this uh, this would be a die and that's the pipe goes in. The 45 degree bit is at the end here and a, a, another die bit is pushed into the end and it pushes the pipe out so the pipe kind of goes out and then goes round into a sort of tulip sort of shape. Uh, that's the first process and each particular pipe has its own die and clump for, for it. And then the second part of the process is a, um, just, a, just a pointy bit goes in and it pushes the ends in so the end gets folded right back in. And that's why it's called a double flare. So it gives this extra bit at the end and that probably isn't visible right in the end there is on the inside the pipe has gone around and then back in so that when the part goes into it it's got a good bit of metal to seat into it like i said this is the die and the tool goes in uh, there's a couple of tools you can use for this uh, the simplest one is kits like this and this is what I had to use for our bigger airlines. Uh, the pipe gets clamped into the relevant hole for it. You have to stick out a certain length at the end, five millimeters. The die for it gets put on the end and that gets pushed in with this clamp. The die bit's the first part of the process which gives you the kind of tulip shape or the bubble sort of flare. And then the second bit this then gets pushed in to create the second part. These things 
we'll get the job done. But they're so fiddly, so time consuming, and, uh, and there'll be a lot of mistakes. Um, you have to check every piece to make sure that it's worked okay. But they will get the job done. What I've got here is a, um, what they call a turret style clamp. Your uh, former bit goes in the bottom. The pipe goes into that piece there. And then this end bit has all the different selections for the different sizes of pipe you're gonna use. And you pick the right one. The top piece goes over. It gets clamped in. You first of all use a uh, this little yellow one. This, is, this little yellow one basically pushes it flush inside and then the handle has the squeezing effect. So it pushes the bit in. It's really quick. Uh, and then you have the second thing to put the 45 degree on it. <laughs> that sounds so confusing and so complicated. I hope this makes a bit of sense. I don't know if I've explained it very well, but uh, that's the reason for putting these on the end. And <laughs> always put the knot on first because you can't put the knot on afterwards. You're doing the best you can Well, life is tough You done had enough You ain't got no cash to spend Come on down to Buddy's Bar It's on the house, my friend We say Jesus ain't an easy man to talk to The heaven there sounded all that night But if you look I think I'll probably call this the end of the video. I'm really happy with how this has all gone. I've started off this process with a massive pile of brake lines on the table. It was a bit overwhelming to be honest. And to the end of it now, it's, I kind of know what it all is. It all fits really well. It looks great. Yeah, I'm really happy with um, how this has come on. Um, it's very nearly finished. A couple more pipes got to go in, uh, mostly because I don't have the things they got to go bolt up to until they've been cleaned up. But uh, yeah, it's looking really good. And thank you very much for watching. I hope that was all right. My uh, first go at filming all on my own and editing. So we'll see how it turns out. I'd like to say a special thanks to everyone who watches, particularly our patrons. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. And our new patron, Alan, Alan Lovell, thank you very much. The last video did really well. We had lots of thumbs up and comments on it. Yeah, that did pretty good. Gets to a wider audience when you have a bit more interaction and thumbs ups and everything. So thank you very much for that. I don't know what I'll be doing next time. Got to finish a few things on this, a few bits of plating to do. I'm thinking maybe the engine's got to come out of its corner. Maybe that's what I got to do next time. Until then, Thank you very much and see you later. What do you say? Uh, they're not here. Say bye. Bye. Oh, so sad. Thanks again for all the love and support. Tim will be back in the workshop again soon. And yes, I am still here and I am still editing these videos. I couldn't abandon him completely now, could I? I mean, look at him. We're the weird ones on the block. Thanks for watching as always. Take care out there until next time. She's my backwoods beauty queen. Baby, we got our own thing. We got our own thing. We don't need no rain. We ain't rich, but so we're a hillbilly king and queen. Life don't seem so hard. You and me, the stars Cause we're growing four-leaf clovers in the yard Yeah, we're growing